Hey, on This Is Gravel Today, we talk, what else? Dirty Kansas, maps, mm -hmm. and our bikes. What's up? This is Gravel. I'm Bobby Thompson, and with me today is Neil Taylor. Neil, I got a haircut this morning. Good job for you. It was the fastest haircut I've ever had. It was this place in town called uh, Eclipse, and they did a good job. I walked in the door. Five minutes later, I walked back out, and I was like, you know what? That's all I need. We're good there to go. go. Are you ready for this week? Uh, absolutely. Can't wait for it. Um, we got the routes to look at, and I can't wait to kind of give a little preview. Let's not spoil everything out there. But... I like surprises, yes. so I don't want to give away everything. But, yeah, we'll touch on some things here, looking at the route, um, and uh, going to have a lot of fun this year. So. Absolutely. Uh, you know, when I saw this route, my first thought was, I can't wait for Saturday. Right. Um, because <laughs> I've ridden... A lot of these roads been mm -hmm. out there through a uh, majority. Actually, I, I look at the course, and I think I've probably ridden on all but maybe 30 miles of this course at some point in the past. And so um, it's fun, and I can't I can't wait for Saturday. It's going to be right. a blast. So rolling north out of town, which we haven't done in ever. Ever. So uh, anything you want to say? Uh, just don't be surprised if things change at some point in those miles rolling north, I guess you could say. Um, you know, things are going to seem really casual like oh, we yeah. say for the first yeah, oh, I see what you're saying. chunk I see of what mileage you're saying. yeah and then all of a sudden um, pay attention to your cue sheets if you know what those are uh, because there are some warnings on there because things change right um, as we leave road conditions. County. yes road conditions change gravel roads change the gravel type change is what you're getting at uh, so what you're saying basically is the first 20, 25 miles are not a fair indication of what the rest of the course might bring you. No, I think it's going to lull a lot of people to sleep. I think a lot of people are probably going to go way faster than they need to because well, the reality is we got a south wind, it looks like, at least yeah. right now, at our back. And so this is going to push us. Yeah. Um, and those first 25 miles, you're probably going to see maybe a couple hundred feet of elevation if we're lucky. Um, and then all of a sudden, you're going to cross out of Lyon County. Okay, so I'll tell you my plan then for that first, what do you, whatever you say, 20, 25 miles. I'm bringing coffee. Yeah. And I'm just going to lay down in the aero bars, casual bars, drink my coffee, and just be pulled along for the rides. Which is that, yeah, kind of what you're saying. Yeah, it is, right. just don't don't burn up too much then. <laughs> um, All right, so let's head on up. We're across the highway there. We're headed into, headed towards Eskridge. Now, I cannot say that I remember writing this i know i have mm -hmm. so do you know more about this area here yeah so uh they they do have it on the cue sheet so we're not spoiling much of anything but they have on there at mile 28.5 um a big warning because mm -hmm. there are holes on both sides of the roads they are there a lot of rain um, a lot of running water it, it but some of this has been there for a while too okay. um i've ridden car reserve road in the past um it is a fun road to ride uh, but it's going to be a shot coming out of lyon county gravel i think into a Bunsey county you know, you get onto some of those other roads. Um, well, Bunsey County, for those that have either ridden up there or done mazes, know it's a lot more remote. Sure. The roads are just different, and so you're not going to find the same groomed conditions in Lyon County. Uh, some of these we did actually uh, a couple years ago when you and me both did single speed up at Jagger. You took first place, I took second place, remember? Um, you know, these are some of those roads, so it, it should be pretty... Uh, Apparently you remember very well. Yeah, I do remember, because I remember I wasn't on the show at that time. You came in with your first place medal sitting here, and Leland was sitting here, and I was like... <laughs> Yeah, I had the second place. Yeah, <laughs> All no right, one's so seen that one. <laughs> let's move past Eskridge. Let's move past Eskridge. Uh, most of us have ridden these roads up here through as part of Maisie's, and this mm. is what you were kind of talking about here. Um, clapboard Road. Yep, Clapboard Green. Um, you got some big, good um, ups and downs there. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, some of those downs, take advantage of them if you can find a good line to take advantage of them. The good uh, thing is you're coming into a checkpoint at that time in Alma. You are. Uh, but, again, well, Bunsey County Gravel, um, it's fun. I yeah. love it up there. The hills are awesome up there. Enjoy the views. You are going to get some views that are just spectacular 
okay. in these roads. And and yes, it's 60 miles in, you know, and you're going to be racing still, some people. Um, but Enjoy man, these roads. Look at what you got out there because yeah. it's beautiful. We rode up there just a couple weeks ago, like I said, at Maisie's. And I stressed that to my high school kids, man, to take in the views. And they did. I mean, yeah. they just absolutely loved the views up there. Would it be pretty fair to say that the middle hundred are the views, definitely 100% the views that you're coming to Emporia to ride? To, yeah. to, to witness is that is that middle not that the rest of it is different but it's just different up there in that middle hundred Absolutely. wouldn't you say it's so remote and you get up on the tops of some of these hills and you can just you can see for miles right I mean, and you see all the undulations you see all the greenery and it is just it's gorgeous i i love riding up in wabunzi county i'd prefer to honestly ride up there more often than i do uh, but it's a 45 minute car ride up there right, so it's, right. it takes some time to get up there take a deep breath as you leave alma because you have about 90 miles until the next checkpoint you have about 60 miles until a water stop and and alta vista but um this is probably the roughest roads that you'll have of the entire ride would that be fair to say yeah i'd say so i mean uh 2015 Maisie's course went through some of these roads and um i will say that some of them hold up really well in rain because 2015 Maisie's, I believe it was, was a thunderstorm. And I was riding this in a thunderstorm um, until they sent the Jeep clubs out to pick a lot of us up, except for the crazy ones that said, I don't care if the lightning's <laughs> striking all around and there's chances of tornadoes, I'm still riding my bike. Um, but those roads all held up yeah. in the moisture, um, but they're, they're tough. Sure. Absolutely. Uh, sure. They're going to be painful. And I know you've ridden some of these roads in the past, too. Um, what, uh, Gravel Duro this last year, right? Yeah, Gravel Duro this last year. I was just looking, you know, Illinois Creek Road is going to be a, a, a good, nice route going south there. Um, and then as soon as you hit uh, this last weekend, I got to go out. So I can tell you this last weekend, uh, 92.5 miles is where you hit Little Egypt Road. Mm. And, uh, I, you know, I love Little Egypt Road. Um, it's completely rideable. You better hang on to both bars. Do not ride in your comfort bars on Little Egypt Road. Mm -hmm. um, and be ready because there are some sketch downhills. And this weekend I was on my own, so I was able to pick my line and uh, bunny hop if I needed a bunny hop, that kind of thing. You will probably not be as able to do that this weekend because there will be many more riders on the course. Yeah. By the time people like us get there a lot of this will have been very well ridden by the all the people in front of us and so those lines will have changed just a little bit so be careful um it is rideable there are some pretty good ruts down little egypt road and when you come out of that also can i give one little piece of uh, advice tip here yeah um that's what this is about when i grabbed my water bottle at the end of little egypt road which you see here in your map before I could even take a drink out of there, I was overwhelmed by the smell of our friends, the cattle. Hmm. Um, let me say this, most of the runoff you're seeing there is from the fields that they're living in, right? So you can imagine what's in this runoff water. What I'm gonna be doing through there and just a little casual tip is uh, I'm gonna be placing uh, sandwich bags over my water bottles for that area and rubber band in them um, because you still have another 30 miles to the water point after you leave here and you're going to need those water bottles and i can tell you I, it took me a while to clean those but your hands are dirty also and um, it's just a good bet to leave those covered until you need them so um, having a friend that a couple of years ago i believe it was either 2015 2016 drank out of a water bottle that had a little uh, contaminated yeah. water on the top of it in the weeks that he spent in the hospital because of that absolutely without right. a doubt cover your bottles it's not going to take a whole lot of time at the checkpoint to do that maybe leave one uncovered maybe stop and switch that cover it's a good time to use your hydro pack absolutely because so. uh, you don't want to be uh, vomiting the next 100 miles no, definitely not yeah. uh voland is actually a pretty cool little place to ride through a little oasis to ride through um it was actually the halfway stop uh during the bleeding kansas uh, ride that we had last year, and um, we drove by, rode by there on Sunday. And there were people out there tossing bean bags, so it's a nice little, <laughs> nice little place to stop to ride through. A little bit of pavement after that, you get back off on the gravel. One thing to watch out for there at Bowling, mm -hmm. coming down a big hill, bridge, fast train track. Correct. There is a train track right there, so you want to be careful on, on any of the train tracks and make sure you stop and obey the laws. Um, coming out of there, you headed back. After that, I would say between there and Alta Vista is gorgeous. You have a lot of up and downs. Um, I will say that we crossed three streams during that section there. And all of them had 
The two of them were rideable, in my opinion, um, at that current time without any additional rain. Um, but you had heavy, deep silt going into the creeks mm -hmm. on both sides. And I think that, in my opinion, I'm going to be walking those areas because that is the type of two to three inch deep silty mud leading into the creek. So the creek's rideable, but riding into it, I don't think it, you'll... And again, be smart for the majority of us out there. We're not racing for a podium. Um, it's not going to take much time to get off your bike, no. walk through the creek, walk through the silty stuff. Having ridden through some of that silty stuff in the past, I've had it grab my front wheel, sink down, you know, six, eight Absolutely. inches, and you're chancing going over the handlebars. And again, do you right. want to do that, one, on a race that you spent a lot of time preparing, getting ready for? Uh, two, if you do, you know, or if you're able to get back on your bike, do you want to ride through the pain for the next 80 miles? Uh, three, if you hurt yourself, the reality is it's very remote up there. Yeah. Um, there is not going to be an ambulance that's getting to you immediately. You are going to well, sit there in pain for a while. And that's um, very true. And, and there's also the other thing. You are not only affecting yourself, mm -hmm. you are affecting those riders around yeah. you. So just be aware and be careful. We don't need any kind of pileups. The third stream was probably rideable. However, it was fast running water over our knees. I wouldn't, I wouldn't ride that either. Now that could go down, it could go up, depending on more rain we get. But just to let you know, uh, gorgeous, beautiful area. Absolutely. So coming into Alta Vista, leaving there, you know, I haven't gotten to the exact next 15 miles, uh, so I can't tell you a lot about it. I can tell you that I rode up and around that area, you know, about a year ago, and you know, you got some beautiful rollers up there. Oh yeah, some nice little rollers. There's even a couple, I, I've ridden up there in the past, not again, these exact roads, but yeah. you even get some sometimes flat stretches. Um, you get some just, again, beautiful views. That that hundred, middle hundred, again, take the time to enjoy Absolutely. what you got because uh, you're seeing something that's just, uh, in my opinion, gorgeous up there that right. you don't get. Coming to Council Grove, you get to ride the Flint Hills Nature Trail a little bit, so you get a little relaxful ride through there, um, which we've all done. Uh, they have it uh, built up very nicely right in that area. So the Flint Hills Nature Trail will be a beauty. Um, coming out of there, you actually have a climb immediately when you leave Council Grove. You get a little pavement climb there just to give you a little punch in the gut after you've left your nice comfy little sag stop. But hey, at that point in time, you're on your way home. Yeah. Uh, you have, what, 50-ish miles left. Mm -hmm. um, you have Cahola Lake to look forward to, which is uh, one of my favorite roads in the area to ride row dd behind kahola oh, lake gosh dd is is fantastic that was my uh, 2014 the first uh, dk half punt i did that was uh i, I cramped on the top of one of those hills <laughs> <laughs> so road, memories row dd is a lot of very uh straight up and downs you have a bedrock base and you have a dirt uh covering over the top not a whole lot of gravel so it will be depending on how the weather is um, it could be, be slick. It could be, probably will be extremely rutted. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of, like I say, big dips also. So you're going to be descending very quickly into possibly some uh, low water crossings from the runoff. And I will say that 2015 was the mud year. And I came down on this section that year at about 9 30, 10 o'clock. Um, and it was actually, it's a little bit. Uh, white knuckle during the dark. I'll, I'll put it that way. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't say anything is only as dangerous as you make it. So if you're riding carefully, then it's, I wouldn't say it's dangerous. If you're bombing the heck out of anything, anything can be dangerous. But it is something that you wanna watch the riders in front of you. Give yourself a little space in case in case they misread their line going on the downhill. Um, and, and just enjoy those roads. They're, they're gorgeous right there, but they are something that you want to be aware of. Well, and the thing is, like I say, take your time there because the reality oh. is most of us that have at least ridden DK in the past, uh, from there on, for the is familiar roads to us. Very familiar roads. Um, and on. so, like I say, this this coming in part was pretty much the exact same as 2015. There's little variations after Americus, but for the most part, roads that a lot of people, if you've done DK in the past, when it came through Council Grove, or, or excuse me, Countwood Falls, um, you've been on these before. And That's so, right. take your time there because you're going to have flat that you can go fast on afterwards. Absolutely. Um, can I give one last personal request? Go for it. Americus, Kansas is where I grew up. 
So if you are riding through America's Kansas and there is anybody out there cheering you on, make sure you give those kids high fives, give them hugs, give them fist bumps, cheer back them on and thank them for being out there for you. Um, I love America's and I love North Lyon County. So make sure that you give a little back as you go through there if they're out there cheering you on. So other than that, you are fast rolling to town. You will be very, very tempted to stop at the McDonald's that is on the turnpike just <laughs> off of Road K as you come through. I've always... Uh, the past times that the DK has come through here, it's like this oasis. You're like, whoa, you see the light out there, you know, and you're like, you know, if I could just, no, no, I got to get. Hop come, the interstate, come right back Come in. on into town. The food trucks are, are much better. But, yes, you're headed on into town. And last thing I will say, I think you'll agree with me this. If you are not competing for a podium, if you are not in a drag race at the very end of it, which almost all of us are percent of us. not, yeah. slow down and enjoy the finish line shoot in Emporia. Those people have been there. There are local friends, families, uh, your friends and families. They have been there all day long just to witness the excitement of you rolling across the finish line. Man, give those kids as many high fives as you can give. Be careful. They give some very hard <laughs> high fives back to you. Don't let them take you down, but enjoy the finish line shoot. Absolutely. Soak it in. I think the last few times that I've come in, I just – I don't even pedal, you know, a couple right. pedals right at the beginning. It is a slight downhill to the yeah. finish line and just roll it in, soak it in. Um, that finish line shoot it. happens in an instant and it's over in an instant. Yeah. And you've spent a lot of long time out there on the day. So enjoy your finish. Absolutely. So. Well, we're going to take, I think, a look at our bikes here in a minute and then uh, wrap it up. All right. Thanks. Hey guys, what's up? It's Neil here uh, showing you my bike uh, set up for Dirty Kanza. Um, as usual, I'll be riding with my uh, Niner RLT9 steel frame. Uh, riding single speed once again. Uh, this year I've got it geared up 4219. Uh, might be a little bit too much, but we'll see. I like having fun. Um, having ridden some of these hills before, I know what to expect, so I'm, I'm pumped for that. Um, as always, I'll be rolling with four water bottle cages, uh, making sure that I have uh, plenty of hydration on me. Uh, just put on some new beautiful hot pink lizard skin bar tape. Uh, comfort to me is key out there. Um, when you're rolling 200 miles, if you don't have some comfort, you're just looking to be painful and miserable most of the day. I've uh, got my Sidero bag inside of that. I will be carrying nutrition, <clears throat> some extra chamois butter, tape. Um, got this. This is an important thing that if you're not, you don't got one of these at Dirty Kansas, you're just going to probably be in trouble this year. Little mud stick. This is a Park Tool one, costs seven bucks. You can get a paint stick too, though I know a lot of people have used those in the past. Uh, I've got my can tubes on here. Uh, love my carbon wheels. This year I've gone a lot wider than normal. Uh, in the past I've rolled with uh, 700 by 35C tires uh, or 700 by 38. Uh, this year we're going 700 by 42 uh, with the Terravail Rutlands to make sure that I uh, hopefully can handle some of those big rocks up there. Um, on the back I've got my little uh, lunch bag from PTAP and this carries my spare tube. Uh, CO2, I'll have uh, some multi-tool, other things in there as well, uh, along with my keg down at the bottom has a spare tube in it. Um, I like to keep those things wrapped inside of something as opposed to some folks just, you know, tape it on their frame somewhere. Um, reality is a lot of rocks are going to hit it, that tube might get chewed up, and when you need it, and that tube is chewed up, you're going to be miserable. Um, so that's my bike for this year. I'm looking forward to taking it through these 200 miles. This year I'll be riding my loft. True Grit. I rode one similar last year and absolutely loved it, so I made the purchase afterwards. Um, comfort first, we got the Brooks carved C15 saddle. We have my Lizard Scan bar tape double wrapped on the lowers. We have my Comfort bars. Uh, let's see, I'm taking laying down, taking a nap in during the ride. Sidero top tube bag and Sidero seat seat bag. I have my, of course, my untapped bottles here with liquid hydration, my Cantu Rebel wheels, and going with ETAP this year. Um, I actually just converted it back to a 2X to have a little extra climbing gears, a little extra fun. And that looks like about it. Oh, one more thing. Since I have the comfort bars, we gotta have the little blips on front so I never even have to come out. Awesome, love looking at our bikes. I'm ready to get on it though Saturday. Um, thanks you guys for watching. If you see us again around town, we'll be here. Say hi to us. Come by. Give us a hug. Uh, make sure, too, if you're not able to get in town, and even if you are here in town and maybe just not able to get downtown, uh, Gravel Guru is going to be live streaming the finish line. There's going to be a lot of content rolling all weekend um, on the Gravel Guru Facebook page, so make sure that you're uh, tuning into that. That's right.
See y'all out there.